This is Timothy Wood with Citadel Civil Engineering. This is Civil 202 Statics. And in this lecture, we're going to be talking about how we actually go about calculating an area centroid for a generic 2D shape. Okay, so just as a reminder, in the last lecture, we talked about how we could go from center of gravity to center of mass to volume centroid to center of area. So that such that we're actually still doing an equivalent system, identifying the total force applied at a point that is equivalent to a distributed mass uh, in a gravita gravitational field. If the gravity is constant, if the density is constant, if the thickness is constant, it resolves down to these equations, which we said amounted to the first moment of area, so a perpendicular distance times the differential area, divided by the total area to find the centroid of a 2D shape. Now, your author goes through, uh, Hibbler goes through, and he starts by dividing his shapes into 2D slices. Now, what he's trying to do here is create a scenario in which you only have to do a single integration. And that's nice. I get it. However, what that forces you to do is to actually do an integration by inspection. Okay, and I find that to be incredibly tedious and painful. And so instead, what I'm going to show you is a procedure that I've documented here and in some of your supplemental reading uh, that goes through and does double integration, which mathematically is more, more advanced, but is actually mathematically simpler than trying to do that first integration in your head. So let's go through this process and see what it looks like. So I've got a, a generic shape. I don't know, it looks kind of like a flag on an XY shape. It could be any shape that we would want to work with. Uh, this procedure is true whether we're using Hibbler's slice method or this method that we're going to talk about here, uh, the procedure that we're going to mark out. It just might have some different expressions. So let's start, start working our way through this. So your first step is to draw your shape to have your sketch because we need that mental model to be able to share with others. And we're going to want to define our differential area on this drawing. Now, Hibbler would say your differential area is probably going to be a slice, and that's totally fine if that's what you want to do. But I'm going to argue that your differential area should be a little box. Okay, remember we're going to move this around as we integrate. Little box differential area that's equal to the differential height times the differential width. And again, these are very, very small, so, you know, infinitesimally small. Okay, so differential height, differential width. This is as opposed to Hibbler's slice. The next thing that we're going to want to do is to identify the centroid of our differential area. So where is the center of this? So if we're doing the slice, we're going to have to find the center of the slice. If you're using this method, it's actually pretty easy. We just have to identify the x and y coordinates because this differential slice has no height or width or is infinitesimally small. Our perpendicular distance from the y-axis is going to be the x parameter and our perpendicular distance from the x axis is our y parameter like so. So that's our centroid location for our infinitesimally small element. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to identify the limits of the shape. These are going to become our integration limits and I identify four limits. So I call them a, b, f1x, and f2x. F1 and F2, those are functions of X, so they're returning a Y value. But let's talk about the easier ones. A is going to be my minimum X value. So what's the smallest X value that the shape occupies? And then B is going to be the maximum X value that the shape occupies, like so. F1 and F2X are going to be my upper and lower bounds as function. So I want to go through and I want to find out what this function is. It might be a piecewise function or it might be a continuous function. I'm going to call this f2x. This is not a number multiplied. This is a function of x. So for every x value along this line, I'm getting a y value that's returning from f2x. Hopefully that makes, makes sense. I'm also going to want to know the lower bound, f1x, like so. Okay, so I've got my upper bound and my lower bound for my limits. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go from here and I'm going to set up my integrations into 
these equations up here. Now, for the sake of argument, I think it's easier if we break this down step by step. So the first thing we want to calculate is the total area. And so when we calculate the total area A, remember that this is proportional to our resultant force or the total weight if we're in a constant gravitational field, constant density, constant thickness, looking at the cross-sectional area. So that's going to be proportional to the area. And this is going to be equal to the integral of dA, that's my denominator, which is equal to the integral from A to B, that's my upper to lower x values, and the integral from F1x to F2x, that's my upper and lower <coughs> bounds in the y direction, times my differential area, or sorry, the integration of my differential area, which is, in this case, dy dx. And for those of you who haven't had Cal 3 yet, the way that we evaluate this is that we work the inner integration first. And so we'll do an integral here. So the integral of dy is y. And then we'll substitute in f2x minus f1x as my uh, limits. And then we'll integrate whatever that is with respect to x. And so this will give us that integral. So we do the inside first, and then the outside. Uh, once you get to Cal 3, that'll be, that'll be self-evident. I'm not going to give you anything too crazy to do, and I'm not going to have you do any integrations on exams. So hopefully the stress level dials back a little bit. So one homework problem following this thing, you'll make it. I believe in you. So this would give us the total area. Now keep in mind, if we have a shape that we know the area of, like rectangles or circles or triangles, we don't have to do this. We can just calculate the total area and move on with our lives. So um, that, that'll be something that we talk about in our next video. Now, the second thing we'd want to do is we'd want to calculate our first moment of area about the x and y axes. And so my moment about the y axis we said is going to be equal to the integral of x dA. And if we do this in the, uh, the form of my limits, that would be from A to B, integral F1x, F2x, x, x, times dA, which is going to be dy, dx. And again, we'll work the inside integral first. When we're integrating with respect to y, the x becomes a constant. So we'll immediately pop that out, integral dy, x times whatever the uh, definite limits are for those functions. It's math, maybe not our favorite, but as engineers, we don't have to like math. We do have to do it. So that's, that's a thing. We'll get there. It'll be fine. Uh, if I wanted to calculate my moment about the x-axis, that's going to be the integral of y dA, same limits, a to b, f1x, f2x. The difference here is my perpendicular distance from the x-axis is my y value times dy dx. So when I integrate this, integral of y dy is y squared over 2. Uh, and then we'll put in our definite limits there so that we'll be squaring some functions. The math gets super exciting, but again, it'll be okay. We'll be able to manage this. Uh, and we would integrate like so. That would allow us to calculate our final area centroid by simply pulling these things all together such that xc is going to be equal to my moment about the y-axis divided by my total area, and yc is equal to my moment about the x-axis divided by the total area. And we'll be able to find those centroids. So double integration, again, maybe not our favorite, uh, but I do think it's easier than doing a slice method in which you actually have to write the function for the, the height and the centroid location of the slice as you go through, which is what Hibbler would have you do. We'll work an example problem or two in class, and I look forward to talking to you then.